Hello, and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Today, I would like to start off with making a distinction. Magicians love making distinctions. On the one hand, we have logic, which is this study of good argumentation, as we've been talking about in the last couple of videos. On the other hand, we have a logic, or logics in the plural. Now, a logic is, for the purposes of these videos, a specific system of argumentation that's designed to make explicit particular features of arguments that can be represented in that system, and these features are ones that are important for understanding what it means in that system for a logic to be a good one. Now, traditionally speaking, what logic as the field of study are interested in are features relevant to the form or the structure of an argument. So what kinds of connectives it has, what types of quantifiers, all, some, this sort of thing. Is there negation present? These all can fit into forming the structure of an argument. And in many cases, what makes an argument good is going to be intimately linked to this particular structure. So much of what we are going to talk about are these individual logics, individual systems of making explicit structures of arguments that then give us a method for determining whether an individual argument is good or not. The different logics that we will look at will differ in the different features that they highlight. And this will allow us to be able to say many different things, both within the individual logics and from outside of the logics. A logic can be characterized by three things. Every logic that we will look at, in the sense of a system of formal argumentation, will have a language, it will have semantics, and it will have a proof theory. The language of a logic is the set of logical and non-logical symbols and ways that they can be combined into syntactically or grammatically correct strings. So you can think of it as, if you want to think about the English language, it has a number of words and it has a number of rules about how these words can be combined to result in something grammatical. But we want to be able to say more than just, this is a grammatical string of symbols. We also want to be able to say, what does this string of symbols mean? And that's where number two comes in, semantics. The semantics is what gives the meaning to both the logical and the non-logical symbols. Now, this distinction between logical and non-logical is, again, something that's kind of specific to an individual logic. What is a logical symbol? in one logic might be a non-logical symbol in another logic. So what the details of those are, don't worry, we will get to them in a later video. Then the final aspect is the proof theory. So that is going to be a system of formal proof, which is essentially the ways in which strings of symbols can be manipulated into other strings of symbols. Now, we will design the proof theory and the semantics for each of our logics so that they are intimately connected with each other so that any time that we have semantical relationships between things, for instance, relationships between the meanings of terms, this will be reflected in the proof theoretic rules that allow us to convert strings of symbols from one string into another string. So as an example of this, you might think that there is an intimate relationship between all and some. We can pick symbols to represent them, that doesn't matter, that's part of the choice of language. The semantics then say that, for instance, if all cats are mammals, then some cat is a mammal. A relationship between the universal claim that talks about all cats and the, par the, the particular claim about one individual cat. So this is something that we will see time and time again. Every time that we introduce a new logic, a new particular formal system for the study of good argumentation, it will have a language, it will have semantics, and it will have proof theory. There is one more distinction that we can talk about once we have this idea of a language that has particular rules of transformation, particular meanings. This language that we develop in the context of a logical system is going to be called the object language. And it works at the object level. This is the object of study, the tool that we are analyzing arguments with. 
Much of what we are going to do in these introductory videos is looking at the object language. How do we construct arguments? What counts as an argument? What counts as a good rule of transformation? How do we get from one type of argument to another type of argument? This will all be happening within the logical language that we will define. But we will also occasionally step back and ask questions about the logical language. And that is at the meta level, so at the level above. When we are talking about a logical language, the language that we will use, which we'll also call the meta-language, is just going to be English. Ordinary, everyday English with the usual truth conditions, usual meanings, and, uh, and so on. So, we can make statements about arguments within the language, and then we can also make, make statements about the logical language using the meta-language. This is a fairly arcane and abstract di uh, distinction to make at this point, but I want to mention it now because it's again, just like the language proof theory semantics triumvirate, it's going to be a distinction that comes up a lot of times. I will start making comments as to whether this is something that we are doing in the object language, this is something that we are doing in the meta-language, so the sooner that you have an idea of what this distinction is, the sooner what I have to say in future videos will make sense. This wraps us up with all of the introductory material. In our next video, I'm going to start teaching you proper logic. We will give you a logical language and start talking about the semantics for it. Join me then. Cheers. Bye.